What's up my loves? My name is Paige, this is Paige's Paige, and today we're going to be doing my July TBR. Hello, so welcome to this video where I am going to talk through my July TBR. And again, is not using Cluedo because I have this to add to it, and I am concerned. <laughs> Basically, I'm around the four and a half thousand mark already. These are all books over 500 pages. I want to keep my TBRs under 5,000. So yeah, I'm not quite on the 4,500. So there is room that it won't be 5,000 pages, but uh, there's also room that it might well definitely be. But I'm just going to talk through the books. I haven't done my readathon prep yet for the readathon video, which will be coming out next. So I don't know what readathons are happening. We're just going to give you the stack and pray to God that something fits. With that, I will go through the things that I want to read and the challenges that I've got in place, then any buddy reads and then extras to fill any like extra challenges that I do because I'm insane. Ash and I did pick out our big books last night before he went to work, so I will see what those are and hopefully there will be one option there that I will be okay with. Or the goal is that we have two options that I really struggle to choose from. So let's unwind these. I think mine was pink, so I'll do Ashes first. I'll have to ask him when he gets home which one's which. Jolly good. Um. Hmm. So that's N Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens. Ew. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna laugh as Ash was actually this one, and I've just correlated that horrible horrible mess onto him but I'll double check on his home oh 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 okay I know which one I'm going for <laughs> so this is the invisible life of Eddie LaRue I feel like the jar is giving me quite a few VA schwabs because I got a gathering, well, a conjuring of light, but I read the second one, a gathering of shadows, and now they're throwing Addie LaRue at me. Well, I'm definitely going with Addie LaRue over Nicholas Nickleby because, ew, no thank you. All right, so first on the TBR is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I'm very excited to get to this. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it, but I'm excited to finally get to this. And this will be coming off one of my book hauls for 2021, I think Ash sent it to me from Ash's Adventures in Books. I think I might be mistaken, but first one on the chopping block, putting the numbers in and my page total is now 4,913. I mean, it's under 5,000, right? All right. So <laughs> I'm a chaotic demon. I don't know why I do this to myself. So for my other challenges, I had my book haul revisited, so I had people vote on these four. Funnily enough, White Fragility got no votes, I'm not surprised, and the temptation to unhaul it is strong. Then Tracy mentioned that she was just going to say Shakespeare but has decided to be nice and vote for something else, but I put that as one vote towards Shakespeare, but that was the only one for that. Then with four votes there was The Vegetarian by Han Kang. I still am tempted to put this on, I know I'll put my TBR over 5,000 pages, but something's just calling to me about it and I'm not sure why, so I would like to still read it but that will depend on the rest of this list so if you did watch that video you will know that the top most voted for book is the bone witch by Rin Chapeco and I think this either had 10 or 11 votes it was very very popular so this is officially on the TBR is coming off my rainbow shelf it's hitting quite a few different goals so I'm very very thankful that it's on there and the only downside is that it's starting a new series but I wanted to finish off my rainbow shelf so I knew that I was going to be starting it this year sometime and hopefully I will be able to prioritize getting the heart for draw onto a TBR by the end of the year and accruing the third one so hopefully finishing this by the end of the year maybe <laughs> I'm actually really excited for the bone which I do know that people say that the it's really hard to remember details from it but I don't remember books anyway so like I'm good so they were my two like active involvements that I feel obligated to put on my TBR 
every month and then I'm gonna read it this month regardless it'll take me less than a hot little minute but it's my annual read of Matilda by Roald Dahl apparently I have been switch and swatching between October and July for my yearly reread for like the past six seven eight years and so I I'm going to continue the trend. It's to read it for July, so I'll be reading it this month. And this is just, it, it takes me no time at all. This is my reading edition. I do have like nine other copies. I have a lot of copies, but this is the version that I read every single time. It's well loved. I think I've had this, well, since I was a child. Oh, this edition was published in 2001, so I would have been seven. Yearly reread going on. I absolutely adore this bookish book and I just, I'm very, very keen for the nostalgic and just, ah, I love it. I feel like there will come a year that I'll be like, I'm good. This year is not that year. <laughs> then I have my buddy read, read along things. So we have the Earth Children's Read Along with The Plains of Passage by Jean M. All. This is 994 pages. I didn't overly enjoy oh no sorry i like this is 975 pages i didn't overly enjoy the last one so i'm apprehensive and then we still have another two books to go this i think is the chunkiest out of a lot of them but i am i i don't know how i'm feeling towards it so if i start this and just decide nah i can't then okay no harm no foul but yes, I'm doing this with Sierra and Amy and I'll leave them both linked below and I just, we can do this. We can do it. <laughs> then for my project with Mel, where we're doing Trojan War retellings, we've got The Women of Troy by Pat Barker. So I reread Silence for Girls last month and loved it. It was such a good reread. I read it whilst doing the 48 hour TBR mini Star Hop round. I'll leave that linked up and in the description if you do want to check out that vlog. And oh, I just, I love it so much. So. I'm very excited to dive into this and I believe it was Mel herself that kindly gifted this. Yes, Mel gifted me this version and it's so pretty. I just realized like the main thing of where this is going to continue on with and I am I'm very excited. And then this is the last book for this section of the vlog, I believe. So then I will be able to put it out sometime. I have to edit six books worth of footage because I haven't done it as I've went so that's fine also same for Shadow and Bone it was an interesting time very excited to just dive into this and I know that there's another one coming out next year but this will get me caught up to date with this series this is a direct follow-on I think the next one might be sort of just more a companion but I love Pat Barker's writing so I am not mad at that and then I have The Song Rising by Samantha Shannon for the bookstar read-alongs for this year we are doing the Bone Season series and this is the third one. Oh, hello this is some interesting this text is a lot smaller <gasps> I'll have to do a comparison between the others. It's it's fresh. But yes, I'm very excited to continue on with the rest of the series. I really enjoyed reading for my mortar and just want to continue on so I can and I'm very happy with that. So this is going to be read. This is going to be read towards the end of the month because when we do our live show, I like to have it with as few books between as possible. And I'm not going to get my mum to randomize my TBR this month to put this at the bottom of the list. So I will get to it towards the end of the month and then we can have a chat about it. We're doing the live show not the last weekend, I think it's the weekend before. Hmm. So I will be reading this the second last week of the month because our live show is on the 23rd of July. And speaking of Bookstar, my lovely co-creator Amy from A Star Reads and I are buddy reading The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodore Gus. <laughs> I am so excited to read this book. I cannot wait to be able to discuss this with Amy. We're going to be doing one a month starting now and I am here. I bought her a copy of this and then I ended up going and picking it up for myself for my birthday and then she kindly sent me the next two in the series. So I'm so excited. I have no idea what this is about aside from it's called the Athena Club. Mary Jekyll and famous daughters of literary characters. 
that's all I need in my life. I am so excited, in case you couldn't tell, and I hope Amy and I enjoy this as much as we do. I am attempting to lower my expectations and be like, it's okay to not go hell for leather into this, just so I don't get burnt by my high expectations, but I just, I think this is gonna be my shit, and I'm so excited to find out. And then last buddy read, I am trying to be a part of Ren's We Are or Not book club, and so we're reading 16 Souls by Rosie Talbot. I literally picked up Song Rising in this one today, so you'll see those in my June book haul. I really don't know anything about it, aside from the fact that it's queer. It's like, I'm following Ren's recommendation. I, oh, the text is nice and big in this, which is great because it doesn't have an audiobook. Oh, and a map, if I need that. The Haunting of Charlie Frith. I read that as The Haunting of Colin Firth. <laughs> this is my last, like, buddy read commitment. I don't think my friends would be pissed at me if I ended up failing on any of these, but I want to support them. So, I'll leave everyone linked below. Go check them out. They're all fucking chaotically wonderful people, and I love them with my entire heart and soul. So, and if you like queer books, Ren's book club is awesome. So, that's like the main stack. Hello, editing me here. Just wanted to come on to say that I am thrilled that this is the first TBR that I have had in a very long time where I have not put animals on. So, I'm free. I'm free. So, I'm just loving that. And so, yes, continuing on. And then, yeah, I'm adding well over a thousand pages by adding these next three books because two of them are 500 plus pages. It's fine. <laughs> uh huh. So, the first is for the Buzzword a thon, which is Weather Words. And the temptation to put Summer by Ada Maguire to continue on with the Beautiful Dead series was strong but I don't really count summer as a weather it just and then on the Goodreads group there were no suggestions of summer they were on the story graph but I was just like oh I don't I don't know how I feel about this so I've pushed this off to another month this year and instead going to hurt myself still finishing off a series which is good whereas that's just continuing one that I want to finish this year but finishing it off I'm going to be in so much pain. I'm finally going to pick up A Sky Beyond the Storm. So Sky, Storm, both are weather adjacent words at least, and or storm. And this is by Sabah Tahir. This is the last in the Ember and the Ashes Quartet. And I am scared because it's gonna hurt. It's a little on the chunky side, not too bad. It is over 500 pages, but it's all good. It's all good. Ooh. Then I have two books that I need to read for Gerbertathon to be able to finalize off my student sim age and I'll leave, like I said, I'll leave everything linked below to everyone and this is created by Hannah at the Let Adam and so I need a gothic book and a Hugo Award winner. So the gothic book I'm going with Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia and I don't know anything about it. Jacqueline gifted it to me for Christmas of 2022 so I want to get to it because I trust Jacqueline's recommendations and I just am excited for it. It was either that or the Deathless Girls so I've gone with this and this is going to be one of the first books that I read because I would like to finish off the student so then I can start counting the rest of my TBR towards my adult age. It's a really like in-depth year-long challenge which I'm having a blast with but I need to pick this one up for gothic and then for a Hugo Award winner you will have seen it just the other day on my these books will self-destruct in 12 months and that's The Wind Up Girl by Paolo Balagalucci. I really should have looked this up the first time, but here we are. I have no idea about it. My best friend ever recommended this to me, and so I want to read it. I put it on the 12 months TBR, knowing full well that I was going to attempt it for this month because I want to finish off my student level. So this is on, this will fulfill my prompt for from Crystal from Bum Book Reviews with the same initials as myself and or her, but these are my initials. And yeah, so that's why I'm putting this on. I'm getting things checked off. Oh, heaven help me, it's over 500 pages as well, but it will be fine. Everything's fine. Why do I do this to myself? Ooh. 
Um, this, plus potentially the vegetarian, if I can't stop thinking about it, is my TBR for July. How the fuck did this happen? I had like four buddy roots and that was it. What am I doing to myself? Holy shit, I think I just broke my arm trying to hold that. Let me know in the comments what's on your July TBR. As I say in every TBR, do you think I'm nuts for attempting this? And yeah, anything down below. If you like this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of this mess, feel free to subscribe. I'll hopefully see you on my next video. Bye!